Welcome to the Break Your Podcast now. Yo, we've had so many guests coming through and we have so many more lined up. But you know what? We're taking it back in time. We're getting real stories from real people and trying to find out, you know, what happened to these people. But one person, I was going to bring him on an episode of Finding, but he dropped a song recently and I was like, yo, he's been found. But I'm it right. What's going on, bro? He did take it. Right, brother. I'm good, man. So look, let's just go straight into it, man. Like, my introduction to you was in England. Yeah. Shrinda Shinda. Big single. Album did really well. Yeah, yeah. Then from that, oh, by the way, 20 years, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, then off the back of that, right, you dropped Ishk in it. Yeah. The album, Bugga Bugga, right? Again, did amazing. I remember, like, I was pretty young. It was on the wedding circuit. Yeah. Everyone was playing it, etc. Then suddenly, right, you disappear. And I mean that with, like, the utmost respect. Yeah, yeah. Like, you disappear. And then in that transition where you disappeared, right, the scene's changing. Because we've gone now from so many artists in the UK, so many singers, we've gone from having, you know, a channel on, you know, which was ZTV, Z Music, whatever you want to call it, Z Music Box, yeah. a show like Just Bungalow, which is now gone. Then, you know, downloadings kind of come up. Labels are dropping like flies. Yeah. And everyone's looking around the UK and it's like, where's everyone gone? And then suddenly you come back out with another album and the industry's moved on, etc. But the album just came and went. Yeah, that's right. Like, honestly, like, and I'm being, like, as a fan, yeah. the first two I remember. Yeah, yeah. The third one I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. I don't even remember it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about kind of what happened to the UK scene. Because everyone talks about, your UK Pangra, support UK Pangra, you support UK artists, etc. But something happened in that period between, like, I'm going to say, what, 2008, 9, 10, to about 2011, 12. And that kind of destroyed the UK scene. And is that a fair statement? To yeah, I think it is, yeah. I mean, first, first things first, I don't, I, I'm a music fan. So this industry for me, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm, I don't really pay, I'm, I don't say that I'm part of the industry or anything like that. But yeah, you know, I had some success with the, uh, my first album going solo, England and uh, My Way, which had Bugga Bugga on there. It was, you know, it was a good time, really, really good time. But at that time when we was recording, everybody was, all the, all my peers, you know, um, everybody had a sound, everybody was working on creating a sound. And we was all trying to develop this sound and release our own type of music or wh whatever it was. People had Urban coming out at that time. I was sticking to more of the Pangra side of things, even though, England was an urban track of that time. I was more of a thisy producer, to be honest. But yeah, we was doing all that. And um, I think the industry started getting digital. Um, you know, we started going onto these uh, digital platforms, iTunes and whatever have you. And then piracy kicked in, budget started going down. Um, and I think labels really and truly, they just sort of, um, they got deflated and stopped investing in artists. Do you think there's no infrastructure to begin with? And the reason I say this is, why is it okay? Yes, they said the Punjabi music industry is small, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? But the the mainstream label survived. Every other label survived and adapted. But in the UK, it's the label just collapsed. I think they were used to getting big paychecks. They were used to big sales and you know quantities of CDs, cassettes, and whatever have you selling. But it, when it went digital, it all the, the the game changed, kind of thing. But you got to ask the record labels about that. That's yeah. that's just my take on it. But if I'm to talk about myself personally, for my, you know, my two pence worth to the industry, it's basically, um, there was albums being produced and an album had a wedding track on there, had a sad song on there, had a commercial kind of whatever current music was, garage or R&B or whatever was going on at that time. We was all working to do, to, to give a flavour. So this is eight tracks, you'll have eight different tracks. You know, you'll have three, four Pangra tracks on there and the rest will be experiments as well and whatever have you. But when it came to singles, for people like me, I couldn't do singles. I, I couldn't do singles because I wanted, every time I released an album, I wanted people to feel an album, a variety of elements of music, you know, a, vi a variety of emotions. And that's what, that's what changed. So when an album like Livewire came out, it was more so that it was a, it was in, in the digital age, on the, just when that was kicking off, and I was releasing a traditional kind of studio album. 
in a time where probably that time I changed. Yeah. And I, I, I sort of missed that train and I should have maybe done singles or whatever it is, but it's just the way it went. Do you think that gap in between, you know, the second album to the third was too big? It was far too big. And it's literally, it's like a business, right? Yeah. It's as soon as you kind of, you know, you become, like one minute you're relevant. Yeah. Even if you're not pushing yourself out there and doing stuff to keep the public eye and you disappear, you can't come back. You, you're not the same Amit Rai that was there who's now here because 100%. the listeners have changed, generations have changed. And you're not the only one. There's a lot of UK artists yeah. who've tried to do comebacks and they're now saying that, you're, you're, we're not getting respect, we're not getting the coverage, but it's, you were gone too long. From, from my personal experience, I, you know, I, would, I started in England when I was like 18 years old. The album came out when I was, what, 20 or something like that, yeah. right? So I've, I've been part of this industry from a very, very young age. And, uh, you know, I had success with that. Then I had Bugga Bugga came out. And honestly speaking, I just thought that this is how the industry is. So when Livewire came, I thought, I'm just going to pick up from where I left off. It's going to be easy. It's not a problem. And then I'll come back and I'll do this. It wasn't easy. It doesn't work like that because dynamics change. You know, in labels, you had certain people you're working with. The dynamics changed within record labels. Uh, you know, it just, everything changed. And I suppose while that change was going on, I was still thinking studio albums. Yeah. So I needed to change. Yeah. I can't blame anybody else. I've got to blame myself for it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, there's a, there's an industry here. The UK had a phenomenal industry. People used to follow us. Like um, we used to go to India. I remember going on promotion tours for like my first albums, and we had we was like respected. Like we had we was a force to be reckoned with. Everybody was creating a sound. We had a we had a platform in the UK, and sadly, I don't see that nowadays. I don't see why. Now, like you're saying that you're, we were respected. Respect doesn't go like. Why did we go from here? to now suddenly, no one's batting an eyelid to us. When I say we was respected, I mean uh, the whole industry, the whole UK Pangra industry. Yeah. I mean, look, from the 80s, we've got bands like Apana Sangeet, um, Alap, um, Hira, Premi, um, DCS. These bands are still current today. They're still, they're still getting booked to perform mm -hmm. at weddings and parties and whatever have you. But when they had created, they had paved a, you know, a footprint for us to go and take over basically and do what we had to do with it, yeah? And um, we tried to do that. But from my, per from my own personal experience, it was like, I thought I had a lot more to give and it's gonna come in time. But what I've realized in, as time's gone on, you gotta take that, grasp that moment at that particular time and capitalize on it. Right. But when, when, our music was respected because we had a sound. We had the way we recorded Door, the way we recorded, the way we mastered our songs, the way, we used to, you know, mix our songs. The, the, the kind of creativity we was doing, we was like, we were doing Bhangra tracks, but with guitars, wah-wahs, and different hip-hop beats and stuff like that. So we was actually trying to do something, the whole of the UK industry. And we was, you know, it was making a noise and there was creativity. That was the most important thing. Everybody was creative then. People were, you know, when we had a musician coming in, we would let the musician do what they had to do, but we'll then say, look, can you try it this way, try it that way? We was actually creating music at that time, right? Whether we had studio engineers in the studios or whatever it was, but everybody was bringing something to the mix and it was absolutely working. The creativity went. Now, when I'm listening to music, I, I respect everybody that's current and doing music. I'm a fan of music, so I respect it, but you don't see those mandolin pieces and you don't see them violin pieces no more. Uh, you know, you, it's loops. You, you can hear one surangi piece on one track and a week later another track's come, it's got the same song. It's a library. You know, people are taking um, instrumentals, guitar pieces of Splice or something like that, you know, just, or logic samples and just using them on tracks. There's no originality in that. Live music was live music. And the one infamous sample that everyone uses, Giddy Andi Rani. You know what, it, it's, 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 it's annoying, I mean, um, I, I, I come from a bit of a rhythm background myself, so there's much more to rhythm than just that, just that sample, you know, like, what a track it was anyway, originally. It's, it's, a, it's a super hit song, but that sample is just rinsed out now. But do you think, right, when we talk about there's no creativity, there's no whatever, it's because it's so easy to enter the industry. So easy, right? Like, you know, you say, like, you know, there's no creativity anymore. Is that because it's just so easy to now be a Bhangra producer? As in, back in the day, right, you had to get into a label. 
You had to get a record deal. You had to hustle, you had to, hustle to get that position. Yeah, yeah. Now it's like you can just create a YouTube channel, make a fake name for a record label up, yeah, you're get right. your songs on Spotify, and then if you're putting out bad music, all it does is it's a, it's a reflection on the UK scene. See, nowadays it's all about content, yeah. right? So the whole game's changed. Like when I'm looking at the industry now, it's all about content. You've got to be releasing something every month just to be relevant, yeah. right? The, I mean, that, you know, we used to have this um, hype when an album's going to come out. I remember when, you know, a Hira album was going to come out or Apna Sangeeta. I will go to like South or Broadway. The, if the Fatta didn't have it, I'll go to the next Fatta, the next shop, trying to find these cassettes just to get hold of it. There was, there was an anticipation about it. We was like going crazy over this music. Now, it's, everything's on your phone. It's disposable. It's, it's, it comes quick, it goes quick. Yeah. But that's how the industry is. We're living in the present now. Yeah. We're not living in the past. And we're not, we don't know what the future is. So we've got to come back to where we are at the moment. And to be honest, um, I don't know, like, obviously music's changed, evolution and everything. Every, you know, sounds are changing. I'm, I've got a nine-year-old son. I'm looking at what he's doing and how he's um, listening to music and how he's actually watching things. Like he's just watching shorts. Nobody watches full videos no more. Yeah. So the whole thing's died out. But in all honesty, yeah, creativity, I, think, I still think, why is it that maybe I'm older now, but if I'm driving, I'll still listen to like Sadul Sikandar Sahib, Bindar Kiya, Manak Sahib, all these kind of songs. I, I, I'll still go, after listening to what's out, I'll still go back to those songs. Um, I'd hope to see that what's coming out now, that those songs will still get played in 20 years' time. Is it, if they've got the longevity, I don't know. But what was made like 30, 40, 20 years ago, those songs are for evergreen. Yeah, let's talk about um, record labels. Because it's like, you know, I'm just looking, literally looking at this table, right? And you've got literally all these record labels on these CDs, etc. It's now becoming a thing of the past. Okay, there's a few record labels still out and about here and there. But what was the relationship between you and record labels? Because there was a point where, and not just yourself, but other artists, relationships became stale. Yeah. There was a point where record labels became greedy. There was a point where, you know, artists weren't being told what their rights were, whether it's, you know, streaming, PRS, etc. This happened, right, in the industry. Yeah, I mean, you know, record labels, respect to record labels, they started off with good intentions, but, you know, people in between come in and, you know, Greed kicks in, I suppose. Yeah. You know, people are signing paperwork that they don't even know what they're signing away on. Yeah. So they lose their publishing rights or whatever it may be. And, you know, it, it's sad that there's certain artists that have had some big hits and today they don't, they're, they're having to go and have a nine to five or a job, uh, whereas they're not getting the publishing and whatever it was from what it was getting, from what they do. But, um, I mean, starting off, I had a fantastic relationship with the movie box and I'm, I'm still good friends with all movie box and Cameron and I got a lot of respect for Shabib G and everybody but um, see the labels like I said earlier they just I don't think that they they're investing in people no more and that's the God's honest truth because they they can't see a return in it yeah. so why it's a business if the business ain't making money yeah. they've got to start looking at other avenues to get some money in isn't it yeah. or hold on to what we've got and just live off the publishing of that mm. but do you think you know the damage that, you know, the record, and again, obviously you mentioned you have a good relationship, but certain la like label owners, behaviours, traits, it's caused toxic traits, and, and like ripples that are still impacting the scene today. And like, look, we talk about the UK scene, right? The, the UK scenes, there's a catalogue, which at one point, it's, yeah. it's nowhere to be seen. And all it's doing is, is, is harming those artists. Like, in the UK, there's nothing beyond YouTube to kind of give people a platform to say, this is who this artist is. This is what he achieved. Remember this, remember that. We don't have that anywhere. Like, there's, there's no, le realistically, there's no legacy of any artist in the UK. You talk about when Bindrakia died, there's no legacy of him. Yes, there's his songs, etc. but you kind of piece into stuff together. You talk about Chingila. Yeah. You know, okay, yeah, a movie was made, so there's something there of his. But all these other, like the child actor, you know, at what point is it going to be where this scene, it's just names, songs, and there's nothing remaining. And it's, is that down to, you know, us as fans? Is it down to your know, media outlets or is it down to labels? I think sadly it's down to everybody combined. Record labels, they've, they've got a big part to play in it. 
but I think artists have got a big part to play in it as well. Mm. You know, I mean, the way I look at life is if you, if you stumble once, you can't just stop and give up. You need to keep going. You've got to keep moving in life yeah. to keep going. But um, legacies of these artists like Jim Kila, yeah, fantastic. I'm a big fan of Jim Kila. I'm a big fan of Bindra Kiya Sahib. I'm a big fan of Manak Sahib. To me, you know, they're always going to be evergreen artists, super artists. But really and truly for what they contributed towards the industry and how their families are left afterwards, it's quite sad in yeah. all honesty because these guys are part of our culture. It's not just part of the Bhangra industry. Yeah. Put that aside, they're part of our culture. They created um, they created songs that were part of our culture. Like a song like Kuldeep Manak Sahib's Ma um, Hundi Ama, that's going to go on forever. That's going to go on forever and ever. Yeah. They're part of our culture. Why? I think while the world has become, while you're relevant, you're part of it. You know, while, you, you know, as they say in Punjabi, Chaldi Gaddi Te Sare Shala Marde, when the Gaddi stops, everybody's off it. So it's, 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 a, it's a bit of a fake industry, to be honest. Do you think this industry, like when you say fake, you're not the first person said it, Jenny said it. Yeah. It's a fake industry. Can you trust anyone in this industry? To be honest, I don't. I, I don't and know. What, the reason I'm asking this, right, and you call it a fake industry, is we had a conversation offline, and, I, like, you know, you mentioned that you're a producer. You're not a DJ. No. So my question to you was outside was, when the first track album dropped, there was demand for you. Yeah. You did no gigs. You was on no flyers. When the second one dropped, the gig scene's got even bigger now. You done no clubs. No, you didn't show your face anywhere. Why? Like, why did you not want to go there, just play your tracks or get a DJ on your behalf? There was, there was, for me, I used to, I remember when England came, I used to get phone calls from people abroad saying, come to like Nairobi, come to Australia. I was like, what am I going to do when I go there? Like, I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm not a DJ. I was, I was from a rhythm background. I used to play Tol and Tolki. I'm not going to go there and start playing Tol and Tolki over my own tracks. I, I think that it's, it's just not the right thing to do. I don't know how to DJ, so I'm not going to fake it to become a DJ. Yeah. And I ain't going to do it for the money because I'm not going to sell myself out for that. Yeah. That's where I came from personally. And you know what, it was, it was just one of them things that I kept thinking that musically I got more to give. Like I've, I've got other, I had other things like, you know, I was, I was successful in other things in life as well. So I kept thinking, I'm all right, I'm going to be okay, I'm going to carry on doing this. But maybe if I'm to go back to myself and speak to myself again, I should have enjoyed those moments at that particular time. Mm. When England was popping off, I was thinking about what's next. Yeah. When Bugga Bugga was off, I was thinking about, no, I've got to do this now. But those moments, I should have enjoyed them because I had some great media tools. I had some great, you know, times. I went to some fantastic places, but I didn't capitalise on what I should have maybe capitalised on because I kept thinking there's still more to come. Mm. So uh, when you're saying to, uh, in regards to gigs, I didn't want to sell myself out. I just had that self-worth. You, you think that's easier said than done? Like in this industry, it's so easy to sell yourself out. And it happens. Like I, we, we can't sit here and be like, I, people don't sell their soul to a devil. I understand. I understand. Look. We've all got bills. We've all got responsibilities. Yeah. And you know what? It's a needs must thing. If you've got to do it, you've got to do it. I, at that time, I was fortunate enough that I didn't need to do it. Yeah. Right? So I didn't do it. But at the end, I understand. I understand this industry is hard. Mm. I'm a fan of this industry. I don't count myself as part of this industry. I'm a fan of this industry. Uh, this is a hobby for me, so it's fine. Mm. But I do really, uh, and I, I respect people that are making a full-time living out of this industry. Yeah. Hats off to them because you know what? That's a real hustle, man. Mm. That's a hard hustle. And you know, these people, it's not just being creative, but they've got responsibilities in the background. Yeah. And balancing that, it's a hard thing to do. Yeah. And respect to those people, you know? Yeah. And how have you kind of found it, like, with a change in attitudes towards media outlets? Because, and the reason I asked that is, let's talk about sound yeah. to begin with. You know, you mentioned, like, the sound is changing. Yeah. It's no longer traditional. Yeah. That traditional sound, isn't being picked up by certain platforms yeah. because they believe it's too dissy. So they'd rather you watershed something and make it into something that's more urban, etc. Is that not a way of killing the culture? You're, you, as in, our roots are traditional Punjabi doors. I get it, sound has a yeah, role. Yeah, yeah. AP and those boys, you know, wicked. The sound they're producing and it's appealing to the masses. But if we're turning around and saying to artists, no, your sound's too dissy. Maybe I'm gonna sound a bit. Maybe culture. I'm gonna sound a bit old and show my age here. Yeah? Yeah. When we go to a wedding or a party, we're still listening to Bhangra songs from 
the 90s, 2000s, and whatever, like Diljit stuff now, current Bhangra stuff. Like you just mentioned, like AP Dylan and all these guys, you know what, respect to them. They've made, they've created a phenomena and it's, it's amazing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, our culture is Desi Tol, Al Goje, Tumbia, them Sarangia. That's our culture. Yeah. Our culture, that's where our Virsa comes from. Yeah. So you've got to keep that Virsa going. How is my, my, my son and my nephews and nieces ever going to know if I'm not showcasing it to them? Mm. So that is a part of the industry that's done. Yeah. But again, we used to make songs that were family friendly, yeah. lyrically. Now, certain songs that you hear, you've got to like switch it off or yeah. even the name of the song, it doesn't even have that particular word, but they, they name it with such a word that you can't even play it in front of your kid because of the, of the title of the song. Yeah. So though, as times changed, I think what we had, we had an industry that was here and then all of a sudden it just went like that yeah. and it just changed. And it like now, again, as a fan looking at the industry, I understand what it's about. It's all about streaming and it's about this new wave and the way it's going. But songs are short now. Yeah. Songs are two minutes. We used to make songs that were five and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. And we used to be excited that, wow, look, listen to the second music piece on the on the eight bar music piece to what we've done on that piece. You know, we used to, we used to try, trying to show off. But do you not think that's down to like change in viewer habits? Because before it's, mm -hmm. you got so much now, you got social media, social media yeah. platforms, you got TV, you got- It's at your disposal. Yeah, it's all at your disposal. And before when you had nothing to choose, it's like we have to appreciate something. Now it's like there's so much available your literary attention span starts there, it goes there, it goes there, it goes there. And you know, I remember a promoter once said it, a club owner. He goes, if there was one Bhangra night a, a week, everybody went to it. Yeah. Then came the second one, which was on another day, then another day. And then you got Bhangra nights happening on multiple days. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Students are then spoiled, which one do we go to? Yeah, yeah. And the promoters put it on the lineup. Sometimes they're losing money from it. So let's talk about look, look, your latest track with Black Magic, Babi. Yeah. Again, bad boy song. But in my opinion, I think it didn't get the credit and props that it was due. Yeah. You know, why do you think that is? You've got to speak to media outlets, you've got to speak to the record label in regards. So I've done my job, yeah. I've given the track. I was presented with Black Magic, lovely kid, you know, he's got a great future ahead of him. Yeah. And I chose the track, I said, this is the track. And, you know, it was a, I, I done that track against the odds because Everybody was saying, nah, we want to do a drill track or we want to do this. I said, nah, this is the track I want to do. Yeah. And the response I got for it was fantastic. Yeah. The response Black Magic got for it was fantastic. It, you know, there was loads of reels made on it. People were dancing to it. It was, it was a great track. But yeah, like, you know, it's, it does need, I don't know what it, whether it's um, linking up with media again or whatever it is. Yeah. But as far do as I'm... Do you think there's, there's a disconnect between releases and media, whether it's through the artist, whether it's to do with the label, etc. And another kind of thing I want to touch on, I know we're running short time, but I've got to talk about this, is when a track drops, there's no campaigns anymore. It's Now it's a case of, you put a promo out on a Monday, it's got to drop on a Wednesday, it lasts for four or five days, the hype, and then that's it. There's no business strategy in place to give it that longevity. Now you look at your likes of like, you know, okay, Siddhu, your Kadams, et cetera. Even though they're dropping another track a few weeks later, there's something in place that keeps them relevant for that track for that period of time. We're not doing that in the UK. We just feel as though we have to keep up with what's going on. So it's drop it, drop the next one, drop the next one. And you're harming no one but yourself. Yeah. We need an industry again. The UK needs an industry. Everybody needs to come back together again, get creative again and you know, We'll change the sounds, change what we got to do, but work together again.